Welcome to Buy Local TV, where we're promoting Michigan businesses, communities, and its people. At Buy Local TV, we want to honor a man that has come from that great generation that has really helped shape Michigan. On November 25th, 2011, we lost Fred Meyer. In 2001, I had an opportunity to be part of a Meyer production that was happening at the new Greenville store. Fred talked about the early beginnings, and when asked, did he ever imagine the store to be as grand as it is today? Here's Fred in his own words. He didn't imagine anything. The only thing we imagined is trying to pay the mortgage to keep from losing the building. And uh, he had, uh, he paid my dad $350 plus $25 for the first month's rent. Then he had $25 left for cash in the till. And as far as I know, that was the only cash money we had. Everything else was used fixtures and on credit. Fred, why is it important to give back to the community? Well, I don't know if we consciously think it's important to give back to the community. It's, it's, it's important to be part of the community. And if you like the community in which you live, uh, you take part. And so it really isn't a policy, it's, it's, it's a, it follows your feelings. Over the years, have you ever taken a moment to reflect on the magnitude and impact that Meyer has had on the communities in which you've operated a business? Well, I don't know, I don't think we know the impact. I know the impact that we'd like to have, and that is that, uh, that the community is better off because we came than as if we didn't. And, uh, and I think we're trying to do that as opposed to reflecting on what did we do. But, uh, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of things in life that give us pleasure and that have nothing to do with money or business, and yet it's all part of money and business. And, and, and one, it really represents our philosophy that if a person does their best, they shouldn't be demeaned or beaten up on. And because uh, when you do the best, you, can, you can't do any better. But we feel that very strongly. And, uh, but we, we, uh, well, we just try to be a good member of the community. And we think that also people like Tom, if he wasn't in Greenville, would, would like that image that, uh, you know, we're trying to be decent folks, treating people decently, and trying to treat people like we like to be treated. And then I go back to our milk days when I peddled milk but we had a new milk wagon and the horse ran away and smashed the harness and the milk wagon and I felt like a failure. Uh, I mean, I was pretty good with a horse at a young kid, but uh, I'd caused that new milk wagon to be, uh, to be uh, broken because I didn't handle that horse. And we were selling milk at a nickel a quart and $10 for that wagon was a lot of money that we were putting new wheels on it. Well, I ran home and my dad ran to find me as soon as he found out the horse got in the yard, of course, you know, a kid 8 or 10 or 12, 11 years old can run pretty fast. I couldn't keep up with the horse, but so I got there shortly after the horse. And uh, all my dad said, are, are you okay? And then I realized, I, I, don't, I didn't even realize, I didn't realize until 30 years later, I was more important than the horse and the wagon and the loss of money. Well, the same thing is true every day in our stores people are more important. And when a store burned, the Greenville store burned, all my dad said, and we lost our shirt and pants and everything else in the first fire, uh, and uh, the second one we had better insurance, we learned. But uh, the, the, uh, uh, all my dad said, nobody got hurt. That was important. So that's, if, 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 if you can put people first, people will put us first. And there's nothing more important in the community than good schools. We all benefit from whatever good schools we had. Basically, every job in our store, if it's done right, is a teaching job. You're teaching somebody else how to do their job or how to deal with the public. Can you tell us a little story about having to raise the rates of all the cashiers, of which Lena was then a cashier? But uh, Lena was making $13 a week, and all the cashiers were making 13 a week. She started at 12, 54 hours. And so she had a chance to go and work for a hardware store, Marion Sagendorf, downtown Greenville Hardware, for 15 a week. And after where I told this story, she said, and for less hours, too. Oh, okay. 50 years later, good God. Anyway, uh, so she's a misused uh, team member. 
or, or something. But anyway, uh, so I go to my dad and I said, Lita's going to leave, you get 15 a week. And I've probably done that a hundred times because you, you know, people can get jobs for and get better paid in a lot of places than, than we pay uh, if you want to do what comes with the job you go to. And uh, so uh, she, uh, I, I said to my dad, uh, my dad said, well, maybe we ought to raise her to 15. I said, well, you can't raise her to 15 unless you pay all the other cashiers to 15. There was five other cashiers, six altogether. Well, maybe we should raise them all. And he was thinking maybe it was time for just a general raise. And I hadn't thought of that. And so, uh, but I, I said, uh, that cost us $12 a week. Yeah, he said, she isn't worth it. <laughs> well, I didn't know that four years later I was going to marry her. And I tell you, she's worth it. OK, we'll, we'll assume that was a good decision then. Okay. How can your past history help Meyer as you move forward? Well, history is always an evolving process. And uh, we can't say what benefits or what doesn't benefit. We're all a part of it. I think if, if uh, you see the problems in the world today, but basically if you can look at the problems of our own selves or how we look on, on things, and if we can become better citizens in the work we do of our great country and, and the world, and I realize that's making a broad brush, but it makes us more, more comfortable with what we are if we're contributing. And, and so, uh, uh, Carl Sandburg was a great poet, and he said that uh, whether you handle sugar, honey, or dung, some of it sticks to the fingers. Well, if we can be a part of the sugar in people's lives, of helping people to be better while we're helping ourselves to grow and be better, that makes it more worthwhile. But basically, life what life is all about is the people you meet, the people you enjoy, and if you see people that are very wealthy and they don't have their health, if we can have examples in the company that people are better citizens, it breaks my heart to see young people start to smoke and this sort of thing. So we hope that we can be an influence for good while they're an influence for our good. In 2006, I had an opportunity to interview Fred at the corporate offices in Grand Rapids when we were producing a video for the Greenville community. Kathy Jo Vanderlaan asked Fred what it was really like growing up in Greenville. Well, uh, that was the third thing my dad did. In the first place, he was a barber. That's his main years of career. And then he, we had the milk business. And I got stopped in Greenville between uh, on Lafayette, on the east side of Lafayette, where the old penny store was. It's on. It was uh, 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 north of Washington Street, south of Cass, on the east side of the street, okay. about in the middle of the block, for not having a taillight on my horse and wagon that I was peddling milk with. So we, I peddled milk all over Greenville, and, and that was interesting. And, uh, and, and we had a taillight except the canvas to keep the milk from freezing got over it. And the fellas, uh, uh, it was a very nice policeman, but when you're a kid, maybe eight or nine or ten years old, uh, and it just got dark, why well, you always remember that. And, and his name was Frank Satterley. And and so then, uh, my dad used to live behind the uh, uh, west of the Congregational Church, east of the east of the building on the corner of Main Street, along Cass Street on the north side near Highfield Drugstore, it was a rooming house. Okay. And he remembers when Greenville's had two power companies, and then one got the exclusive, I think it was Tower, I'm not sure, and they cut all the poles of the competitor down in the middle of the night, and when he was sleeping there, bang, bang, bang. And so they, whatever it was. Well, uh, that had nothing to do with Greenville today except it's part of their history. And Greenville has a rich history of lumbering and logs and all those things. My dad, being a barber, knew a lot of that history. And when we'd be peddling milk together or we'd be going doing work together, he would tell me a lot of that history. And I always enjoyed that. Well, then we, uh, we got 
in the grocery business on the corner of Charles and Lafayette on the northwest corner because he couldn't rent the buildings and uh, couldn't get a tenant during the Depression and he couldn't pay his taxes or his, his payments or his interest or in other words we were doing lousy but everybody was doing lousy and uh, so finally uh, when we tried to rent the stores to A&P and Kroger and a company called C. Thomas they weren't interested in North Greenville so uh, but he went to Red and White and they loaned him the groceries in other words they gave us the groceries on credit and that's how we started the grocery business. We should not have succeeded. <laughs> but uh, my dad, I was 14, but my dad's philosophy was two basic things. In those days, people needed income and they didn't have jobs. And it was tough. And you probably heard your grandparents talking about these days back then. And my dad had a real feel for people. And uh, I, I guess that makes me like the slogan of the Mary Smith who's buried in Blenheim Palace in England. Here lies Mary Smith. She did her best. Now, if she's buried next to Winston Churchill, if he did his best, and he probably didn't like we all don't sometime, if she did her best, raised her family, did the cook and wash and all those things, what more can you do? And my dad had a real feel for people. And... Uh, I think he imparted some of that to me, certainly the lessons, I hope I learned them. And so we got in the grocery business, uh, we, we were a laughing stock amongst the other merchants. There was 23 grocery stores in Greenville at that time because they had them on front porches, they had them on grocery stores all over the place. Oh, wow. and, uh, and so our chance of succeeding was very slim, but we did. And uh, the uh, and, and so I've done nothing else. I, I've never worked any place else but the store. But I, I was talking this morning to someone that was driving me from the airport. And, you know, people are pretty wonderful. If you can look at people, sure, we have problems with this one or problems with that one. But on the average, I dare say most of us don't have anybody we hate and very few people that we really dislike. Now, we talk about those things sometimes because they disturb us at the time, but basically uh, people are pretty darn good. If you approach people that way and they, they you'll find out they are, and uh, if you don't know that when you start, well, you'll know it when you got done if you think about it. And so I, uh, I was very fortunate to have a father and a mother that worked very hard, and I've worked very hard, but I've had a lot of fun. So. I know Greenville pretty well, and I, I've peddled milk all over town. I've heard stories about Greenville from the barber shop and in the store. And Greenville is a wonderful place. It was a wonderful place to grow up. It's a wonderful place to live, and I'm sure it's a wonderful place today. And uh, if there's anything soft in my heart, even though we moved to Grand Rapids because our, our business centered here, uh, I still have fond memories of Greenville. And we go up there to the alumni banquets and so forth. But Greenville is just a great little city. And, uh, and there's opportunities there. I mean, that's, we started the first store there uh, with $337 of groceries on credit. And uh, people knew we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and, uh, but they, they were kind to us. And so we... Uh, uh, we tried our best to serve them, and they rewarded us with the business. And that's how the business got started, and, and it grew from there. And we've been lucky, lucky to come from Greenville, lucky for the teachers we had in the Greenville High School. I remember once we had a teacher, I had a teacher named Larry Robinson. How many of you think the test is unfair? Many of us stuck up our hand and said we thought it was unfair. Well, he says, you're going to be out of high school pretty soon. You'll find that nothing is really fair in their life. And he might as well get used to it now. And there's nothing really fair. There's nothing fair that I was as healthy I was as I was. 
and someone else has a bad experience in life or isn't as healthy or has an accident that I didn't have. So I, I've been very lucky and I've been very pleased to be growing up in Greenville. I went to Congregational Church and sang in the choir and, and uh, nice people. <laughs>